Hello, everyone. Welcome back with Michael and I here on the Satanic Media Agenda Exposed. I know that Michael's been working on these sessions for a long time, and we're going to be closing it down relatively shortly, I think, Michael. You said that this might be the last series that we're going to do. Is that correct? Yeah, hi dear Brett, hi dear listeners. Yes, it's the last item on the satanic media agenda because in the future, like I always promised, I would like to have more Bible-related topics. But uh, this is really mm. fascinating stuff because if you if you get the scheme behind it, uh, then you really understand uh, what's going on in the media, in uh, politics, actors, uh, art. What else? And uh, that's what I find interesting, that uh, everything is uh, interconnected with the other thing. Um, it's uh, Bruce Lee, the bigger picture, but at the moment we are still in the United States of America with the Sharon Tate killing of the infamous Manson family. And therefore, I invite you to have a listen to this session and the next session because these two sessions they will handle everything that I find very interesting around these Manson killings. When we will start, um, I will appreciate if you do your own research and please trust no one. Everybody makes mistakes, uh, including us. And so therefore, please uh, just uh, see this as uh, some tips, some hints that you can start your own research. And of course, you are free to have your own opinion. But I can only share my opinion uh, based on all the facts that I found and uh, based upon the Bible and looking for the truth. So let's dive in. Always do your own research because maybe you got other sources than me or than us or who else and other ideas. And maybe that topic is not that kind of a thing that you would like to dive in, but it's very revealing, I think. So let's start. Sometimes I do not know what is fake news and what's not, but I think that we are heading approaching the uh, new 2030 agenda and the digital age and all the restrictions, censorship, which is uh, George Orwell, a Secret Service uh, employee, um, and Eric Arthur Blair actually with his 1984 on steroids, as uh, Daryl Eberhardt so um, colorful points it out every time. So. Um, I think that in the near future, many, many things will be blocked, not only censored, but totally blocked so that you only have the big brother, so to speak, the official narrative as uh, the truth. And uh, therefore, I think that AI, artificial so-called intelligence, intelligence or knowledge or science so-called is the one to go so that nobody can interfere or have an argument with anybody because everything has been dictated and indoctrinated. So I don't care if that is here correct or if it is fake news, um, but uh, the direction is very, very clear that we are heading towards a digital uh, currency, digital uh, surveillance, uh, digital community where ev everything is, is, uh, is yes, okay for the government or no, uh, it's uh, not okay uh, for the hierarchy. And uh, Oh, are... well, why would they be talking about social unrest? Gee. <sighs> Why yeah, that's Hegelian that? dialectic. Yeah, Such you see, you you cause the unrest, moment. yeah, and then yeah. you have the proper means to deal with the situation and uh, try, for example, to create a police state. Yeah. Oh man, so it we, smells so bad. <laughs> It, it, it never changes. It was right no. in the beginning when Jesus Christ was walking down the earth. This is first John four. Yeah, this yes. is the spirit of Antichrist, the liar That's from the right. beginning. This is a spirit of Antichrist. It's not anything which comes in the future, futurism or so. It is happening right and here. And it happened since the beginning of the fallen world, fallen mankind when um, Cain slew Abel. Yeah, that it, it, the spirit of Antichrist is also the one who slew Abel. That's a few thousand years ago, according to biblical timeline. So please, would you care to read these verses? Because every time I find them so revealing, Brett, that it is not happening in the future, but it's happening Absolutely. everywhere. 
happening right now. Yeah, this is reading like the news that you put up above here. Uh, you know, all believers ought to be uh, reading their Bibles and knowing their scripture because then no one can deceive you, brethren. You know already. Okay, so 1 John 4, verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come. And even now already it is in the world. Isn't that revealing, Brett? Here it's been stated that there was a teaching of futurism 2,000 years ago. Yes. <laughs> so I think that the historic, historicism view of uh, <laughs> every uh, of, of uh, everything in the Bible that is uh, it's quite uh, true. Yeah, so there are two kind of spirits. It's the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So the spirit of truth, of course, is the one and only Holy Spirit. And the spirit of error can only be the Antichrist spirit. So the opponent of Christ. And Satan means the opponent, the adversary. So. Oh, let me finish the... the, the uh, yeah, please. The verses. So we, we left off on the end of yeah. verse 3. Yeah. And even now it is in the world, the spirit of Antichrist. Okay, so verse 4 continues, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know ye the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. That's yes. the end of the reading. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, In a nutshell. So there are two fronts. Yeah, The one front with the one spirit for the truth and the other front with the ah, the spirit of antichrist. Erroneous spirit. Yeah, they, yeah. That, that's what the world wants. They want the erroneous spirit. You can feel it. Uh, you know, you know, it's interesting, Michael, I don't know about anyone else, uh, but I can only speak for myself here. If I ever decide to go anywhere on a Sabbath day and do anything outside of my house, I always notice the quirkiness of it. I, I don't know what it is about it, but I've just come so far to believe that this is a very important day. The, the Sabbath day is a very important day and that you should just use it to uh, talk with your Christian friends and to study your Bibles. And that's about it. I always hated the Sunday because it, 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 we were happening to have that uh, lunch with that uh, ugly soup and everything was so uh, quiet and you uh, and I always loved the so-called Saturday which was the Sabbath which I did not know at the age of six or seven you obviously. know you can mention it to your friends that believe in in Christ and and have the faith but they are a lot of them are wrapped up in this Roman Sunday system yeah and they just cannot accept the fact that that the Sabbath is Saturday yeah the Jews system. are correct in that sense. It's the Helio system, Helio sorcery. You know, that's the thing. You know, you, you kind of have to do your own research, like Michael said, especially when it comes to the Bible. Don't take the church's word for it. Don't take the pastor's word for it. Don't take any, any philosophical, philosophical approach, because that's the wrong way. That's why I don't like to use that term, Michael, historicism, because it's basically a philosoph philosophical term. Mm -hmm. And I don't even like to use it because to me, it's like what Yerk Lisman was saying years ago when I was studying with him on a daily basis. You know, it's the truth. Mm -hmm. 
You know, you don't need a term mm -hmm. for it, a philosophical term. It's the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's dive in. You want you wanted to hear more about the things uh, of the uh, Manson family and what it got to do with Bruce Lee. Uh, yeah, everybody knows that picture. Everybody knows that uh, Abraham Lincoln was shot close range. Point blank, huh? No, point, point blank. Point yeah. blank, yes. Sure. Everybody knows that Rome was behind it, and this is the assassination. You have to realize that it happened in a theater. Can you imagine? Well, here's the thing, Michael. Everyone knew, yeah. past tense, okay. that it was Rome behind it, and they didn't care much for it because, oh, you're going to upset the apple cart. See how we've been trained? Mm -hmm. You know, we've been trained here in America, Michael. Mm -hmm. That uh, if you if you upset the apple cart, then oh you're the problem. Mm -hmm. So pretty much that's how all of these indoctrinations work now. They make it so bad and so hard for you. I mean, just look at the current crisis we just went through the past three years, and you know what I, you know exactly what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We can't talk about this stuff anymore, Michael without getting censored and our videos are getting shut down well they will be i would assume because you know we speak out against the beast that's that's you know on the rise and who's riding the beast huh it's it's roman yeah it's a it's, roman it's, beast. it's roman of course um, my point was that uh, I'm not in going into who did it and, and everybody who's listening to your channel, Brad, knows that it's Rome behind the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, Charles Chiniqui and, and all these uh, sources. Mm -hmm. it, happened, it happened in the Ford Theater, where theater is an invention of the Jesuits. So even here you got the information that it happened in a lodge <laughs> yeah, where the supreme <laughs> people are... Uh, looking looking down to the usual stuff to the usual play but it happened in in a kind of an entertainment uh, room and it happened uh, in a theater so a jesuitical play look at this comparison here please these are the muppets in a lodge in of course the muppet show and Yes, we are still in Bruce Lee, but uh, Bruce Lee has to wait another two sessions. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, you see, these people are criticizing from the lodge. So these are supreme beings here. These are members of a lodge. In every session, they are appearing. Statland Ward of our pair of Muppet characters. This is my absolutely. That's I'm honest with that. Yeah, this is serious what I'm doing here. But just I want to show you something. From the sketch committee series, The Muppet Show. Men, puppets, Muppets. And are these people being treated by their governments as Muppets, as men puppets hanging from a string? And somebody's pulling the string and people do not know who's pulling the strings. And these people here in the Supreme Lodge, you can see them, for example, as politicians. Yeah. So who's really running the show, who's owning the theater, no one knows. And who's pulling the strings, also on Bruce Lee. Well, that's... Uh, the thing that we have to find out. So, these people are being named after the Stadler Hilton and the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. Astoria comes from Esther, which is one of the very prominent visitors of the Titanic. So, in this Muppet show, yeah, these characters who are supreme beings, they these are influential people because they have been named after big hotels and uh, usually uh, they don't come cheap but uh, these are people who are really into the mammon yeah so the mammon rules everything Stadler and Waldorf are been named after these two hotels okay I'm just rushing through this because uh, everybody knows the Muppet Show but the Muppet Show is also a Hollywood project started in 1955 and has something to do with programming yeah has something to do with programming, for example, has been uh, attributed by Frank Oz, uh, like the Wizard of Oz, and uh, has also ties to the Sesame Street. So this is the stuff that uh, little 
uh, people as the little children are getting, also with the uh, numerous acts from the show business. Alice Cooper, for example, Elton John, yeah. So sodomites and the alike, horror uh, actors and all the stuff, they are being uh, shown to the young audience and they're making fun of it. And uh, you won't see why I have shown the Muppets here, but uh, wait, wait to find out. You will see why I have uh, looked into the Muppet show and this lodge. Yeah, so they are also been interconnected with these uh, Muppets Wizard of Oz with the uh, really programming and uh, leading the people on the yellow brick road. Not by accident, uh, they have also used that pentagram like in the original Wizard of Oz, which is from uh, coming from a Theosophical Society. Oh, that original script here. Yeah. But let's have the shortcut. You see that everything is a big agenda. If there is one movie which has influenced my entire life from the get-go when I was young, when I was a teenager, it was The 39 Steps. The 39 Steps is a 1935 British spy thriller film directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Alfred Hitchcock, by the way, went to St. Ignatius College in London. And Alfred Hitchcock is not been known for very nice movies. He's known for horror movies, for Psycho, for The Birds, for Marnie and uh, all this stuff. Yeah? So for horror movies, actually. And uh, yeah, killing people. So Alfred Hitchcock studied at London County School. And uh, he has received a strict Jesuit education Hitchcock received at St. Ignatius is often cited as an influence on his film. And this is uh, a quote here. Hitchcock said that at St. Ignatius, so that is the um, Ignatius of Iola, that was the first general of the Jesuits, he learned important things, quote unquote, a strong sense of fear, how to be realistic and Jesuit reasoning power. The fear, the realism mixed with fancy, the reasoning power and discipline of ordered thinking. These were the cornerstones of his art. No director was more disciplined, more ordered in his thinking. His unusual meticulous methods were key to his films and success. This movie, The 39 Steps, featured Robert Donnett and Madeline Carroll. It is loosely based on the 1915 novel The 39 Steps by John Buchanan. But who's John Buchanan? He is G C M G G C V O C H P C D L. This is the Knight Grand Cross of the Order of St. Michael and St. George. This is the <laughs> Grand Cross of the Royal Victorian Order. This is the Companion of Honor. And this is the Privy Council of the United Kingdom directly related to the Queen and Deputy Lieutenant. That is not an ordinary writer. He's not. This is Mr. Buchanan. He was even General Governor of Canada. That guy was a Scottish, very important here, Scottish novelist, historian, politician, blah, blah, blah. And he wrote that script for, or that story of the 39 steps. He was at the British war in the Propaganda Bureau. Propaganda, we know, that is the sending out of cardinals. The committee of cardinals in charge of foreign mission of the Catholic Church. <laughs> that means propaganda, actually. He was working in the war for the British Propaganda Bureau. And that novel featured a hero called Richard Henney. It was loosely based on a friend of Buchanan. And then he later he was being attached to the British Army General Headquarters Intelligence Section. So we're speaking of a spy here. We're speaking of somebody from the intelligence who was high-ranking knight directly attached to the Queen. And he wrote that uh, novel. Huh? Interesting? I think so. Then later he was a second lieutenant on the intelligence corps and later he was appointed as the director of information in 1917. <laughs> That's not an ordinary guy. And therefore he has come up with a spy story, The 39 Steps. The 39 Steps in itself is concerning a Canadian civilian in London, Richard Henney. Um, think of it again, Canadian and uh, that guy, uh, that author is also a Canadian governor. Richard Henney, who becomes caught up in preventing an organization of spies called the 39 Steps from stealing British military secrets. Mistakenly accused of the murder of a counter-espionage agent, Henney goes on the run to, Brad, look at this, Scotland, mm -hmm. and becomes tangled up with an attractive woman, Pamela, while hoping to stop the spy ring and clear his name. 
the 39 steps. These are the 33 steps. The steps of Freemasonry Scottish Rite. 39 steps. Steps Scottish Rite. So either we can assume that he wants to fool us, or we can assume that there are more than 33 steps in the Scottish Rite, or we can assume that he's just playing with words and uh, that he's just uh, having a reference here to some hierarchy or to some lodges. Let's find out. In that movie itself, the police has been displayed as New Scotland Yard. has something to do with Scotland, I think. And it uh, heavily relies on that man. is called Mr. Memory. He's a character in that uh, spy movie, The 39 Steps. And he's been based on William James Morris Bottle, who performed in music halls from 1901 onwards as Datas, the Memory Man. He combined his prodigious ability to recall facts with his quick wit and necessity for dealing with hecklers in the audience. Hitchcock retort. There was another interesting character in the film, Mr. Memory. He's based on a true life musical personality called Datas. The audience would ask him questions about major events like when did the Titanic sink? Haha, <laughs> Titanic, what, uh, what uh, coincidence. And he would give the correct answer. The whole idea is that the man is doomed by his sense of duty. Mr. Memory knows what the 39 steps are and when he is asked the question, he is compelled to give the answer. The character is based on a real person named Datas. I said, okay, let's look it up. This is Datas, the original memory man. He sold his brains <laughs> to doctors for 2,000 pounds in 1904, but he outlived them all. His brain, he read it as the heaviest in the world, was then sold to King's College when he died in 1956. He was the inspiration of Mr. Memory in the 1935 Hitchcock version of the 39 Steps. Hitchcock had seen Datas to perform as a child. And I said, ah, that's interesting. Hmm. There's even a video showing his grave. And that grave is uh, equipped or displayed with an S. An S. Oh, an IHS, Michael. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Mm hmm. Clever, oh, huh? Yeah. Clever. You know, this is, this is what Satan does. He leaves his mark, yes. doesn't he? And right on the cross. Yeah. How convenient. Mm hmm. Yes. And that guy had a visual memory, so let's say he was uh, trying to remember the Great Fire of London. He'd remember 666. Oh, sorry, 1666. What a coincidence. It's 666, huh? Bible, anybody? <laughs> kind of like the Great Fire of, uh, what was it? Uh, what was that uh, ancient Roman city? Rome, was it? Mm -hmm. Fire of Rome? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ring a bell? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that Mr. Memory was really in existence a little bit earlier. 39 steps, a serious question, please. And he's called Datas. That is his, uh, his, his name. So his artist name. Huh? You have no idea this man was essentially the human Wikipedia. Uh -huh, yeah, if you believe it. Okay. <laughs> Datas. Brad, I got something for everybody. This is Data from Star Trek. Data is a fictional character in the Star Trek franchise. His positronic brain allows him impressive computational capabilities. Yeah, he's, he's an android. Data, not with an S, but data, means he can store much data. So he's a so-called living uh, humanoid uh, hard disk drive. Data. And I think that he's based on Datas. Yeah. Data was in many ways a successor of the original Star Trek Spock. In that character has superior mental skills and offers an outsider's perspective on humanity. Ring a bell with artificial intelligence, anybody? Ah, by the way, Star Trek Spock, Leonard Nimoy. Look at this. This is his 
Venuvian greetings or Venuvian salute, which is nothing more than Satan's victory. And by the way, I hope that you can see it here on the tarot card, the devil, which is tarot card 15. You see a pentagram here. You see the goat of Mendes or the, the fallen one. Yeah, you see two and uh, chained uh, male, female. Yeah, because um, everything is bound uh, in the materialism is bound to Satan here. And uh, by the way, do you see that uh, hand gesture here, which is exactly the same hand gesture at the Venuvian salute from Mr. Spock? So, Mr. Spock, could you zoom in? Could you zoom yes, in on that yes, just a yes, little bit, yes. Michael? Thank you. Yes. Uh, oh, I thought I had it. Thank you. Yeah, that helps. Wow. Huh? Indeed. Yes. Yeah, you see these raised eyebrows, you see this uh, sharp, uh, everything resembles here a goat. Huh? Yeah, so it is. The display, the devil card, he speaks the devil and the ancient ga ga goat god Dionysus showing sitting in his throne while watching over a male and female captive. It represents being seduced by the material world and physical pleasures. Can you imagine why I have showed it in the context of Bruce Lee, the material world and physical pleasures? I think you can. See what I mean? See what I mean? So if you come up with people who can store much in their brain, you will come up one day with the effect that, oh yeah, there's also a data which outperforms any human because I know that guy from Star Trek. Ah, Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Sure. I think that quote everybody knows from the last uh, session. We know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. What is the disinformation program? Actually, in short, it's a lie. Yeah, It means we know our lie is complete when everything the American public believes is false. So you can imagine that, you, uh, that the information coming from the CIA, for example, is just plainly false. And uh, this is just coming from, of course, from the one who is the Antichrist spirit, who is not the spirit of truth, but the spirit of error, which we have learned in 1 John. And this is John 8, 44, where Jesus said that the Satan or the devil is the liar and the father of it. So, welcome to Charles Manson and the murders that shocked the nation. How they died. Extras and four slain in ritual. Mm -hmm. Oh, in ritual, that means in uh, religious context. Mm, interesting. So, this is the official Wikipedia story. The location is 10050 Cielo Drive. Cielo means celestial, means pertaining to the Christian or pagan heaven. Uh huh. Can I correct that? <laughs> Pertaining to the Catholic or pagan. Oh, I'm heaven. sorry. Yes, yes, you're correct. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Glad that put I have green, you on board. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I get so used with all the lies. So it's, it's really no, no, strange. it's okay. I, yeah. That's why I'm here. Just yeah, so a little Cielo, reminder. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Michael. Cielo Drive is Latin. Cielo means uh, the usual word for sky in most of the Romans. So Roman-like language, like uh, French, Spanish, Italian. So that's the road to the sky, or would you like to say the highway? Huh? Cielo Drive? It's a sky drive. Transferred sense of heavenly, very delightful in English comes from early 15th century. Uh, also, there is a, um, a fixed uh, quote, Celestial Empire, so Sky Empire, China from 1808. I said, oh, interesting. Uh -huh did not know that. So on, on the night of August the 8th, Tex Watson, on the uh, order, according to the order of uh, allegedly Charles Manson, took Susan Atkins, Linda Kasabian and Patricia Cranwinkel to 10050 Sky Drive in Benedict Canyon, Los Angeles, or the City of Angels in California. California means Kali, means the snake, and fornication, and oh, where to start? Watson claims that Charles Manson had instructed him to go to the house and totally destroy everyone in it, as gruesome as you can. 
You heard the story last time. Now the details. The occupants of the house at Cielo Drive that evening were movie actress Sharon Tate, who was eight and a half months pregnant, and the wife of film director Roman Polanski. Her friend and former lover Jay Sebring, a noted celebrity hairstylist, Polanski's friend Wojciech Frykowski, and Frykowski's girlfriend Abigail Folger, Harris to the Folgers, coffee fortune, and daughter of Peter Folger. Brett. Brett. Can you <laughs> think why I have uh, highlighted here eight and a half months pregnant? Um, well, okay. about to give birth. Okay, I don't know. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, later. <laughs> also present was William Garrison, the caretaker, and his friend Stephen Parent. Yeah, that's the one who was just driving to him uh, quarter to 12 or so in the evening to show him the latest Sony digital clock. Sure. Polanski had an alibi. He was in Europe working on a film. Yes. So after then, they were stabbing and slashing and hanging and shooting and everything else. <clears throat> the first victim allegedly was uh, the one who was uh, sitting in that 1965 AMC Ambassador Coupé, the poor Stephen Parent. Ah. Ambassador means Old Spanish from Latin ambactus means a servant, a vessel, a messenger, a servant. I said, ah, interesting. Huh? So first they got rid of the servant or the messenger. Hmm. Also Latin word am AMC ambassador. Ambassador has also relation to embassy, means a mission, a charge, an office of an ambassador. I said, oh, interesting that uh, all these coincidences then with Cielo Drive and Ambassador. And I said, oh, there's much more to it. Yeah, remember that uh, Sharon Stone allegedly was eight and a half months pregnant. Ah. Oh, I did not reveal. Ah, okay. I did not reveal it. Okay. Uh, yeah, then you have to wait. Um, then somebody was tied up with a towel. You, of course, that would be the, uh, the, the choice that you use a towel for this. Uh, oh, come on, come on. This is just all the things. So, and the victim, Sharon Tate, which was eight and a half months pregnant, you remember? Um, she was stabbed 16 times, kidding her. And I said, 16 times, that's easy. Yeah, 16 means the tower where, for example, for example, the World Trade Center, where people had been destroyed, fallen around the tower, destruction, chaos, awakening, sudden change, and all the like. Yeah, this is also the Crowley version of the tower with the one eye symbol. I said, ah, interesting symbol huh? with the dragon and uh, all this uh, things there. Yeah, the tower looks a little bit, uh, yeah, medieval, huh? The coroner's inquest found that Tate was still alive when she was hanged with the nylon rope. Although the case was blah, blah, blah. You do not need to know this. You can look it up on Wikipedia. If you believe Wikipedia, I'm sorry, but uh, you have to look it from the perspective of a ritual killing because she was slain and she was hanged. Ah, she was hanged. Interesting. Also, if you believe the official narrative. Hanged man. Tarot card. The hanged man. Yeah, upside down. So that is also the refusal of Christ. It's not the Peter's cross. Peter never was in Rome. Don't let me fooled by the Roman Catholic Church. This is the hanged man. This is the ridic to ridicule Christ. Yeah, that's the hanged man. It's also a symbol for death, of course. Yeah, but you also have in other rituals, everything is a ritual. You have the hanged man. That's the World Trade Center. Yeah, like the hanged man. Huh? One leg on top so this is my solution to it when i know that it seems to be a ritual then she was eight and a half months pregnant simple huh a plus one plus two means eleven That is a Freemason code for Genesis chapter 11. Ah, oh, my. Wow, Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 4, and the whole earth was of one language. Oh, you're learning English, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east... 
that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Babylon, eh? Yeah, I found it very interesting with the eight and a half months pregnant. Usually here in Germany, we are counting the months, so he's, she's in the eighth month or the ninth month. Usually you don't say in eight and a half months, usually you count the weeks. Yeah, or you say she's in the ninth month or two weeks before, uh, 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 or what else? But eight and a half, it's very strange. So it, it gets to 11. And if you think I'm far-fetched, uh, let's look it up. Yeah, this is the Tower of Babel. And this is Europe, many tongues, one voice. Yeah. You oh, see? yeah, the famous poster. The famous poster. Yeah, with all the pentagrams. Square Inverted, heads. inverted satanic the baby. pentagrams. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there's much more to it. Yeah. Yes. Pink Floyd, not a brick in the wall. And, and, and then one of the members is called Nick Mason. Ah, hmm, okay. Yeah, we don't need no education. We don't need no thought control. Yeah, you tell that this be, that these poor children who had to sit in the classroom uh, for years with face masks. Yeah, we don't need no thought control. Huh? They're all indoctrinated. And uh, Bricks and Stones also reminds me of that famous band called the Rolling Stones. With this uh, tongue sticking out here, uh, which is, of course, a symbol for the snake. Or would you like to go to the Indian Rome with their uh, gods? It's the god of Kali. Yeah? So stones are worshipping Kali. And Kali is one component of California. California, the fornication of Kali, the goddess Kali. Kali. Huh? Ah, yeah. Uh. And 11, of course, can also uh, have a reference to 9-11, your famous emergency call in the United States. Yeah, that is speaking of uh, a king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit, which, of course, is nothing else and nowhere near. Uh, which, And this is, of course, Satan. Okay. But the 11, eight and a half months pregnant, you find it also on Apollo 11, for example. Or in Roman numerals, uh, you find that with the twin towers. Yeah, that's one and one. Yeah, it's not 11 because 11 is X1, I know that. But it's also flight number 11. Yeah, so you, supposedly. Yeah, so you have it everywhere, the 11. Okay, that's coming from the session American Rituals. And it's very interesting when you find about uh, this California means California cation from that rock brunt, from that rock band Red Hot Chili Peppers. Space may be the final frontier, but it's made in the Hollywood basement. Yeah, it's California cation. Yeah, so it's the fornication of the goddess Kali. Uh, Kali goddess, forgot. Yeah, with their tongue sticking out in almost every picture. Yeah, tongue sticking out. That's Kali. Okay. So many people uh, proclaim, oh yeah, drugs were uh, there were the problem. Uh, somebody was dealing drugs. Wojciech Frykowski, that's uh, the one to blame for dealing drugs with them. And they had a drug encounter. And uh, many people are just... Uh, Then going full force into this uh, poor Sharon Tate being uh, slaughtered, uh, including being pregnant eight and a half months. And uh, they claim, okay, this is murdered innocence. Okay, if it would uh, be that case, then the only innocent person would be the baby. Oh, so our baby means the inhabitant of Babylon would mean the unborn child. I'm sorry, I have to correct myself. Yeah, but uh, there are numerous pages of Sharon Tate. Ah, oh, she was so good looking. She was so nice. She had a great voice. And oh, she was so innocent. Ah, okay. Yeah, my comment to murdered innocence is this. Yeah, it's a pink face palm because um, you have been framed. You have been framed. We have all been framed. Yeah. Does that look like murdered innocence? 
Sharon Tate. It's really interesting if you combine that name, Sharon Tate, you can also uh, put it together as Satan. I'm not joking. And she's not reliable because that was her parents, obviously. But uh, she was made in the USA and she's here as a Sagittarius. I said, oh, Sagittarius, there was something with the Golden Gate Bridge. Ah, Sagittarius. Interesting. Huh? So she's depicted here with the bow and arrow. Sagittarius. Okay. And of course, with the, all the pentagrams and one pentagram. And don't you be dare to think of that pentagram in the middle between her two, obviously, without any bra breasts, um, is an American pentagram. No, it isn't. It isn't. And she is portrayed as being innocent. She's totally innocent. She's absolutely innocent. Yeah. Okay. She's an actor. She's uh, uh, portraying herself almost naked, but she's totally innocent, of course. Yeah. And this is a picture here, which we see later here. This is a picture of the alleged uh, three daughters of uh, Mrs. and Mr. Tate. Yeah. Hence the name. Mm -hmm. We will go to this later. Yeah. Ah, I think we have been framed. There are numerous agencies out there who are just being busy to make movies on propaganda and all the stuff. Catch a falling star and put it in your pocket. These are just framing. You have a beautiful young wife, a pregnant one, and she's been murdered. You see, it can't get any more horrendous and, 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 and evil like this, you think. Yeah, so she is murdered innocence. Yeah, allegedly she was studied, she was well educated. Look at her head. Mm -hmm. That head has another meaning. That is not a book on top. That is just the explanation of the word. It's not my explanation. If you got a square on your head, that can mean anything else. But if you are familiar with the 11, maybe you can come up to my conclusion. And of course, she was totally innocent. That's why she was uh, dressing like this or like this. Or like this. By the way, that's Tony Curtis, whose real name is not Tony Curtis. And she's innocent, as you see. She's totally innocent. Yeah, She has a hard time remembering where all her clothes went. She is totally innocent. Huh? She is absolutely innocent. And what does she have to do with Bruce Lee? You can ask yourself. Uh, yeah, you see, yeah, she took lessons from Bruce Lee. And they were... Mm, close by. And uh, then later on, she married then Roman Polanski, a director and uh, yeah, all the things. Yeah. So of course she was innocent uh, because she was murdered by the so-called Manson family. We are due in Tate murder. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So that uh, Tex Watson, yeah, Charles Watson, um, has then uh, murdered Sharon Tate and her unborn child. This is the official's narrative story. Actress and forced slain in ritual. I said, okay, ritual, I know, yes, religious killing, yeah, but where's the religion then? Yeah, so what's what's that a kind of a killing? Okay, ah, then I found out, okay, um, that Mr. Manson allegedly is a leader of a satanic cult. Ah, he was being programmed with the Beatles music on Helter Skelter. I said, yes, okay, that's a ritual, of course. Yeah, it must be, so there must be Satanists. Ha, ah, that would explain everything, huh? I think. And then I looked at the headline once again on the daily news and I said, 11 murders. I said, uh, 11? Huh. Once again. I said, oh, that's strange. Always this. But it must be a religious ritual because it is ritual slayings. Okay. These are the victims, by the way. Yeah. And can't get more evil than this. So they're not defending themselves, but they are boasting with it. Yeah. So there must be real Satanists, huh? Even in Germany, they say, "Oh, the the girls of Satan uh, killed the film star." And look at this eyes. Yeah, this man is, is possessed and is evil to the core. The killing of Sharon State. Ah, oh, sorry. Yeah, the, the killing of the state. Yeah, the killing of Sharon Tate. Exclusive story by Susan Atkins. Yes, and you, of course, you have to believe it. Yeah. So when Charles Manson allegedly died, the one with the swastika on his head, yeah, um, it is not tolerance in the media. 
and said, oh, he was a poor guy, he was misled. No, they are just uh, telling you that uh, Charles Manson burns in hell. So that means that's another religious content. Hell is religious content. Charles Manson. And he did not kill Sharon Tate for crying out loud. Officially, he gave only the orders, but he was uh, sentenced because he gave the orders. Oh my, if every, for example, religious or cult or military leader would be sentenced to, to jail if he would have made an order that his troops would going to kill somebody, then the jail would be full of military personnel, I think, Brad, huh? <laughs> so, this is all a frame. Yeah, this is all a frame. This is the official frame. This is all the frame. This is the this official is a very narrative. recent photo, isn't that? Sorry, come again. This one right here of that woman, I forget her name. But, um, uh, um, Leslie Van Houten, sorry. Leslie Van Houten, yeah. that's her name. Yeah. She's going to be released from jail. Is this a recent photo, correct? And that looks like praying here, huh? Right. Yeah. So religious context. And even there are police officers who discovered the body. So this entire story has been uh, verified by authorized personnel. Yeah, you got the um, you, you got the official cor coroners. Yeah, you got the police guys. You got uh, these uh, these people who said that, yes, we have killed, killed him, uh, killed her, etc. And uh, they are just boasting with that. Yeah, Bob Burbage was one of the first police officers on the scene of the first Manson murders. He said he can never erase the memories of the horrors he saw 50 years ago, brutal violence and the like. So one of the killers, Susan Atkins, said, uh, yes, Tex Watson uh, came in and said, I am the devil and I'm here to do the devil's business. So another religious killing. Yeah, she said, uh, Chairman Tate begged for her life and for the life of her baby, but um, she had absolutely no feeling. Uh, I could have felt nothing. I have absolutely no feelings. Yeah, she had just a cold, Shoska, just a cold blooded murder. That's what she tells you. Once again, you are on a trial for murder and then you're boasting with it. How smart is that? Usually she could have said, oh, yeah, I was under the drugs, I was under the influence, and maybe she would have gotten a lesser fine or a lesser uh, penalty. Sorry, fine, is, I'm not a native English speaker, but uh, I said, oh, yeah, why they are boasting with that? I said, okay, that's interesting because that Susan Atkins also has a problem with clothes. For example, she was a stripper and uh, she was uh, being... Uh, One of the members of that uh, very interesting comedy club called uh, the uh, Church of Satan in San Francisco. Yeah, you know, the city of St. Francis, San Francisco, with the Anton Sanalave, who has erased that church officially on Valpurgis night on the 30th of uh, April 1966. Yeah, and she's allegedly the one in the back. Yeah, so she was a member of the Church of Satan. So everything points at Satan. Also, the motor group 1% means uh, we are ready to uh, use violence. Uh, we do not uh, obey orders, any, anyone outside our club, straight Satans. Yeah, so everything in the case of, of uh, Manson murders is Satan. Yeah, so Charles Manson actually is a Satanist. Then uh, Susan Atkins was in the Church of Satan and they have uh, connections with the straight Satan. So everything points to Satan. Interesting. Uh -huh. I have my reasons why I've never mentioned John Todd. Because uh, that guy is some strange character and uh, officially he was being uh, harassed for uh, drugs and uh, raping uh, girls and all the stuff and that so-called informer he said he was a high-ranking uh, witch usually he had met in sorcery because witch is a is a female uh, attribution as far as i know but i'm not in that cult yeah so he said oh yeah that uh, charles manson was demon possessed ah, i said okay i have to believe it huh yeah and uh, they have something to do with a cult called the process and that's the only brotherhood i worry about because these people wanted to kill me i said where this guy coming from and nobody actually knows 
Yeah, but uh, he then has been sent to a mental asylum. And okay, you see that I don't buy the official narrative, but uh, I have a hard time uh, believing John Todd because you can believe me or not. But uh, in the past few years, I have listened for extensive hours to his uh, testimonies, uh, according to castles who has built uh, some stairways uh, for the witches to land. And that's uh, why I said then, okay, I, I stop it because I don't think that he's a reliable character. So everybody can make some claims. He said there are witches who take uh, spells on recordings and uh, so many uh, interesting stuff. But uh, I was never convinced of John Todd and uh, you will see shows, no, you will soon see why. He said there are brotherhoods are very about it as a process. Yeah, um, They are into human sacrifices. They have the inner and the outer process. There are nice people on the outer process, but they are really uh, Satanists on the inner process. Yeah, about human sacrifice and they turn everything around. Yahweh is the evil God and I know all the stuff from memory. So the outer process church. Yeah, so it's a it's a satanic cult. Yeah, satanic bike rider, satanic Susan Atkins, satanic Charles Manson. Everything is satanic in the ritual killings of uh, Sharon State. Therefore, it must be a human sacrifice of a mother with her unborn child. So, so, so. He says, so John Todd, that strange character, he says um, the other characters at the Yellow Drive in that house, they were just there by accident. And she, Sharon Tate, she wanted out of that circle of Satanists. Yeah, and uh, her husband has an alibi in Europe and he ordered the an entire attack. And um, yeah, she wanted to have the baby. He apparently didn't want to have the baby. And uh, so uh, she wanted out and you don't get out unless you have Christ. And uh, so they have uh, slain her. Yeah, so she wanted to have the baby and she didn't want the baby to raise up. It's wrongly translated here. And she wanted out and they didn't let her. So somebody allegedly he has uh, then called and engaged some Satanists who have uh, slewn her and her unborn child. Yeah. So it's, it's a very strange story there. It's a very strange story here. But of course, that story has been backed up by all the authorities, by all the officials, by the corona of the so-called stars, Thomas Noguchi. So everybody has uh, the blessings of the authority, so to speak. Yeah. So the coroner said, uh, yeah, that happened this way. The uh, police department said, oh, yeah, that was a terrific, uh, was a horrific uh, sight. The killers are boasting with it and everything has to do with Satan. Or has it? What? Very convincing, huh? And all the blood and pick on the outside of the door. Uh huh. Yeah, the problem is that we have found out in the last session that uh, nothing really fits in that narrative. And then I found a very interesting. Yeah, that's another. That's the La Bianca murders. It's also using pigs here, and this is bloodstains, and the poor victims are lying here, and uh, the American flag, where you see upside, upside down. down. Yeah, right. Upside down. I said, oh, oh. Don't don't fool me, please. Yeah. Who is having an American flag upside down on his sofa? Who's using American flag? Sharon Tate was American, but Roman Polanski was Polish. Where is the Polish flag? This is just a question I'm raising. Yeah. So LAPD and everybody says it's horrible. And uh, Charles Manson was being programmed by Beatles song Piggies and by uh, Helter Skelter and all the stuff. Yeah. And uh, then, of course, the police messed it up by contaminating any evidence that could have been on the blood splatter. Ugh. Yeah. The gun grip was found under the chair. And of course, they left the evidence on the scene. And then they threw out their blood-stained clothes out of the car. So it, it seems a little bit like they wanted to be caught. Ah, yeah. So the scene was contaminated by officers who walked in and out of the crime scene in Los Angeles. Yeah, at a house of celebrities, at that uh, ritual slaying of several people. It's hard to believe, but it's of the official narrative, huh? 
Because, uh, don't forget, yeah, the official frame is that Sharon Tate is murdered innocent. Yeah, officially, she did not tell Roman that she was pregnant until she was already four months pregnant. Ah, oh, so much for trust and honesty in the relationship, huh? Tja. And, of course, Roman was uh, more playboy than anything else. So it's very strange that they have bought a house and that they were getting marriage because Polanski actually is a, yeah, at least a playboy. And not only Polanski. Hmm? Ah, Polanski is a director. Ah, so he's directing movies with young women, for example, Sharon Tate or, for example, Natasja Ginsky. Or some, some people say satan's skin natasia skinsky you can also nah, okay but it's 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 not uh, to blame for that yeah for example that he directed tess of the dubervilles with the stonehenge in the background very interesting huh? very interesting so a sacrificial place yeah I mean, come on that's not a sun clock yeah that's it's just the exoteric uh, explanation of it it's not a sun clock huh And the daughter of uh, Sharon Tate, uh, she said, my, 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 we had such a great time uh, there in 1969. We, we were on the foot of the bed and watching the moon landing and the moonwalk. I said, oh, can't be Michael Jackson, but must be this. Yeah, she said, actually, the whole family watched the moon landing. I said, yes, another Freemason ritual. ha. <laughs> Michael, zoom in on that. Yeah, panel. yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I expected that. I expected that. <laughs> you know, ever since you pointed this out, Michael, mm. all of my friends that I talk to, I I ask them, so do you believe, do you really believe the official narrative of, uh, of you know, going to the moon? I even asked my brother, for goodness sakes. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, my brother goes, well, if we went to the moon, how how, how come... You know, how many years has it been now? 50-some years? Hmm. How come we haven't gone back? Hmm. That's a very good question. Hmm. Yeah, you see, this <laughs> is just a student work here, yeah? So that, that, that you do with at the age of 10 or 11, yeah? Oh, please, mother, please hand over the screwdriver. <laughs> and all the little handkerchiefs uh, they put on there hanging down and the tin foil, you know, mm. gold tin foil mm -hmm. and copper tin foil. Yeah, and, and the and the big uh, thrust here, yeah, you see you see <laughs> you don't Yeah, right, see, the crater, yeah. You don't see any crater. Yeah, and you don't see any stars, but you can quite easily You don't see any stars. All you see is just pure black. Yeah, the, the NASA, the astronauts have said, no, we didn't see any stars. But later on, it was revealed that, oh, yeah, the, the question was wrong. Yeah, they did see the stars while circling around the moon, but not on the moon because it was so bright there. Sorry, guys, that seems to be cement. <laughs> yeah, that is not the moon. I can tell you why. Uh, because it's just uh, pure, simple physics. Yeah. Mm. Once again, you got the 11. No? This time is Apollo not eight and a half months pregnant. Yeah. And it's also not flight 11 into the World Trade Center, but it's Apollo 11. Apollo yeah, is a Roman god. Oh, Roman once again, like, uh, yeah, no? like anything else. Yeah. How did they land without having any crater turbulences here? And with that apparatus, I would not... Uh, Trust myself that that thing goes one inch up in the air. Yeah. And there relies life. Life relies on this. Ah, it's, it's, it's so ridiculous. So this is all staged. Why is it staged? Because I believe it's staged. I have a hard time believing it that everything went according to plan. At least when I saw this, that this murdered innocence, Sharon Tate, her father, was in army intelligence. I said, what a coincidence. Every time I come up with something, these people are, have some ties to intelligence and it's not only her father. Yeah, Look at this. Yeah, She was educated in the Passal Erqua base in Verona in Italy. Ah, so Mrs. Sharon Tate, the murder's innocence, yeah, she was educated in the army facility in Italy. Ring a bell? Italy, there was some, some capital city in Italy which uh, messes around with the entire world for centuries now. Huh? Yeah, so she is not a murdered innocence. Her father is army or 
in closed terms, think of uh, disinformation tactics. So maybe it happened not this way, but any other way. Yeah? So let's assume it happened that way. But she is not murdered innocent. That is a picture of a 1960 military journal. At that point of time, she's born in 1943, by, for example. Yeah, so Sharon Tate is posing, riding a rocket on a U.S. Army. This is a fellow symbol, guys, huh? Mm -hmm. Just go back to that session we did on uh, the whole thing with, uh, oh, what was the title of this one, Michael, where we went into the early stuff with NASA and mm -hmm. uh, Warner, Warner Von Braun and all that. What was that session we did? Mm -hmm. Can't yeah, so even recall she, the name of was, it. Uh, um, science is a new religion, you mean? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Science or, or is a American new religion. rituals in the conspiracy series. Okay. Yeah. So here, an un you see here, she is born forty three, and uh, in Dallas. Uh oh, huh? John F. Kennedy. Huh? Um, she was seventeen years old. She was underage. Yeah. She was underage. So you can tell, she studied in the army uh, facility in Italy. She posed riding on a rocket in an army journal when being underage so she needed the approval of her parents in my humble opinion so they said yes you are a poster girl for the united states army so that was the beginning of my interest and i th said okay maybe that stuff is an army project because Her father is army. She's posing for the army. She's going uh, on a, in a facility in Italy for the army. Come on, murdered innocents. Yeah. What about all these guys here? Jay Sebring, a celebrity hairstyle, whose original name is not Jay Sebring. I said, uh oh, I smell something. He is supposed her former boyfriend. And of course, Rowan Polanski had nothing against that he was visiting uh, Sharon on a regular basis. Ah, I said, uh, so much for murdered innocence. Oh, she looks so innocent. Huh? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. But they won't believe us that she's into Satanism. Uh, yeah. Do you believe in magic? Yeah, she was uh, portrayed here in that movie, Eye of the Devil. Yeah, so once again, that's just devils and there are rituals and yeah, you see what's what's going on. Yeah, yeah, this is 1966. Uh-huh. And I said, my, 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 you've been framed. You've been framed. There is absolutely, in my humble opinion, there is not much room um, that it happened that way that uh, they are telling you because the wounds does not fit uh, the location does not fit the, the entire narrative does not fit and I got other things to come up so I think it's the same as in the moon landing ritual which happened few weeks before in July 1969 and that happened here on 8 uh, to 9th August of 1969 so we have been framed including me because i have to look it up and usually i thought oh yeah manson that was the guy who murdered and no manson did not murder uh, these people yeah and this is just a frame this is just a frame and i got two interesting authors who are, who come up with the uh, same idea this is scripted reality Yeah, it's a television and entertainment is a subgenre of reality television and these things are pre-arranged yeah so they appear as if they have uh, some other content and this is just scripted yeah so uh, these people they know to play their role also i highly suppose that uh, these people in uh, these uh, manson community they are not uh, what these uh, evil killers as they are portrayed i would highly doubt that Yeah, so I think that is a ritual. The 9-11 Sharon Tate ritual, as one website points it out. Why 9-11? Well, <laughs> it's quite simple. It happened not on the 11th of uh, September or on the 9th of November, but it's quite interesting because 9-11 is involved in that Sharon Tate uh, ritual killing. Because ritual, the official narrative mass media tells you ritual. Why is it a ritual? 9-11, yeah. 
that's a Porsche model. A 911 is the car that the former boyfriend of Sharon Tate, Mr. J. Sebring, was driving. And that car was in that area of Cielo Drive 10050 on the official pictures of that estate. Was that Porsche parking? Yeah? So I said, okay, oh, that's a very smart move, very smart way to tell the insiders, oh, it was a 911 ritual. Yeah, I know you think that's far fetched. That's because you are not, uh, yeah, you are just following the official narrative. But remember, we are speaking of a director called Roman Polanski. We are speaking of. Oh, a Michael, look at that. Talk about that's interesting. You put this photo up. Can you zoom in above her head to the left? This, you mean this? Yeah. Here? This crown? Yeah. Yeah, it's a crown. Okay. I think. Well, it's really interesting mm -hmm. uh, how that almost looks like a IXXI to me mm -hmm. from this distance, mm -hmm. but it's not. But it, it's, it's an MR, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Or something to that, maybe MRV or VR. No, I haven't or... checked that out because I got so much material, Brad, that it's it just it, it seems never ending. Yeah, but that but... that seems to me like almost like an IXXI yeah. symbolism, which is also 9/11. So go mm -hmm. ahead, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is from that movie, The Fearless Vampire uh, Hunters, mm -hmm. or The Fearless Vampire. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. You know as well as I do, Michael, and I think many others that listen to this channel, that uh, that is an ancient um, Roman Catholic, um, you know, uh, insignia actually is Maria. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an M and an A, mm -hmm. uh, kind of similar to this, this little uh, carving above Sharon Tate's head or whoever that is, right? Is mm -hmm. that Sharon Tate? Yeah, yeah. Sharon Tate with a red wig. Yeah. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so it's very similar to that. And uh it's in the Roman Catholic Church. You can see it on their altars even. There mm -hmm. are there are churches that have that insignia. Uh the the Maria insignia on the altar itself. So yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, so she's just an actress, yeah, in that movie. And later on, she posts uh, nude for Playboy also in that outfit. Yeah, so come on, murdered innocents. Hi, 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 hi. We're talking about a director here. We're talking about an uh, actor, actress. <laughs> oh, my. So my hypothesis is that all murders are, of course, religious killings because it's just uh, the Holy Spirit on the one hand and uh, the Aaron's, Aaron's spirit or the Antichrist spirit or Antichrist on the other hand. And, of course, uh, When Cain slew Abel, that was the spirit of Antichrist. So all killings are religious killings because this, this is happening in the belief that it is a right to kill, that men are God and they can kill. Yeah, so all murders are in the wrong belief that they are actually gods, that they can take life as they please, that they don't have to, to obey any god. Yeah, so of course, all re killings are religious killings. And all actors. Yeah, so Polanski is a director and an actor in that movie. And uh, Sharon Tate is an actress. And officially they uh, met each other here and fell in love and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, all these actors are liars because they violate uh, one of the Ten Commandments that you shall not bear false witness. But actors and actresses, they always are bearing false witnesses. So they are all liars. Yeah, so well, you... it's, it's really simple, actually, yeah. Michael. There, There is a... Uh... Um, an old definition of of being a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. And there are many references, you know, even Jesus in Matthew 23, mm -hmm. when he was rebuking the scribes and the Pharisees and calling them, you know, hypocrites. When you look at the the Greek meaning of a hypocrite, it is to wear a mask. It mm. is to act, to become an actor. Yes. Mm. So hypocrites. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I mean, they're teaching us to be hypocrites. And that's fun, huh? 
I guess a form I guess, of entertainment. Yeah, I guess I guess that these uh, actors are all are uh, serving an agenda. Actually, um, I looked it up today. What agenda actually means? And agenda means theological uh, matters of practice, things to believe, matters of faith. Almost like dogma. Mm -hmm. So we know that we are living in a world of lies, and actors, of course, are just uh, portraying and boosting all these lies. What's happening here, actually, in that uh, Sharon Tate uh, case? Could it be that it is involved in uh, Freemasonry? Freemasonry also is uh, portraying, displaying pentagrams. Freemasonry is using zodiacs. Freemasonry is using all that stuff. Yeah. For example, the 4th of July, where usually people say, yeah, that, that's um, a day of uh, celebration in the United States, is also the day when the Sun and Orion's belt rise together. So could have been also a second meaning, Brett. So we know who is ruling the world. This is just uh, the Antichrist spirit, the religious spirit of the brain yeah, is in the Vatican. The finance is in London, City of London Corporation, and the military power, of course, Pentagram, Washington Obelisk, not Washington Monument, but is an obelisk. The military power is in the United States. So these are just symbols of uh, the worship of the Antichrist. Yeah? Osiris, uh, or, uh, Nimrod, or Baal, Shaft, yeah, it's, it's, it's the same. Yeah, it's it's July the twentieth was a moon landing ritual, for example. Yeah, July twenty yeah. was also also the date for the German resistance of that uh, faked uh, uh, assassination on uh, Adolf Hitler. Yeah, these are just coincidences. It's all really coincidences. I never knew that, Michael. Interesting. Yeah, can I make a comment? Yeah, sure. I was also thinking about you know one could make the argument that. The uh, the city of uh, uh, oh, what's the name now? I even forget Washington D.C. This District of Colum Columbus. One could make the argument that uh, since that was a successful city, that this is the the whole goal of the Counter Reformation was to create this military structure called the uh, Corporation of the United States of America. And the people just won't get it because they're not instructed in the esoteric view that you have, say, in Europe. In the United States, they don't have an esoteric view. They have an exoteric view. They just take the common knowledge and run with it. They don't think about it. They don't question it. They don't read their Bibles on their own. They have their priests. They have their pastors. Um, there's a lot to it, actually. It's mm -hmm. not simple. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's very time consuming. Yeah? That's it why I, I always I always hope to, to save people some time. Yeah. So if you you don't have to uh, rely on me but if you really do do research uh, you see that uh, many things in california have been set up by the government or just more specific uh, by the military or even more specific by the secret service so the first hint that i would uh, suggest is weird scenes inside the canyon, Laurel Canyon and covered ops and the dark heart of the hippie dream. We're speaking of 1969 here. We're speaking of the end of the 1960s. And this uh, Sharon Tate uh, uh, killing or Manson family, uh, this is, has much to do with the Vietnam War, which we will soon find out. So this is a very interesting book or um, PDF. And uh, I have uh, uploaded uh, more than 20 sessions about the, all these chapters one by one on my second channel. And I will, I hope to remember that. I'm not Mr. Memory, <laughs> I'm not Data. 
to upload it on my second channel with the appropriate link so that you can listen to that as an audiobook. It's uh, from David McGowan. And David McGowan is the same guy which we have attributed, we have mentioned in the Science is a New Religion series when it came down to the moon landing, the Apollo moon landing. Yeah, So that's the same David McGowan with the wagging the moon doggy. And that David McGowan, he was then having a, a turbo cancer, so to speak, and he was not uh, living much long. That's very sad. But because he was a really clever mind, he was a clever guy. And he was a clever guy. And I looked up in that book here of David McGowan, Weird Scenes Inside the Canyon. And I said, okay, let's have it for Tate. Yeah, Tate. Roman Polanski and Trevon Tate. I said, oh yeah, they are. When I came across the fact that, of course, yeah, Jim Morrison from The Doors, his father was a high-ranking military official. He even directed the uh, the boat in the Vietnam War, uh, what has been allegedly attacked and caused the, the outbreak of the Vietnam War. Wow. Oh, was that something about the Gulf of Tonkin or something? Yes, yes, exactly. The Gulf of Tonkin, yes. Yeah, that's his, that's yeah, his father. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And so that is very interesting when you see all these connections in these uh, Lowry Canyon. Let's, uh, let's try it. Paul Tate. Sharon Tate was the daughter of Lieutenant Colonel Paul Tate, a career U.S. Army intelligence officer and Nancy Sinatra is of course the daughter of Francis Albert Sinatra whose known associates included Lucky, Lucky Laciano, Maya Lansky, Sam Giancana, ha, Kennedy anybody, Carlo Gambino, Cortano Lucchese and Joseph Fichetti, a cousin of Al Capone. Frank Sinatra was also a client of the hairdresser to the star Jay Sebring as was Henry Fonda who at one time strangely enough lived at the guest house in 10050 Cielo Drive. I said, ah. <laughs> it's all in the family. It's all in the family. I said, that's very interesting to start from. So when you have really uh, inhaled that book here, Weird Scenes Inside the Can, you see all the stuff that the CIA, even they created rock bands like the Grateful Dead and supplied them with the free of charge uh, LSD just to find out on a field experiment like uh, 50 years later in 2019 like to find out in a great field experiment with billions of people voluntarily <laughs> freelancing into never ever experienced medical yeah what else uh, huh? bread yeah guinea pigs guinea yeah pigs. right guinea pigs yeah so they had a, a complete culture here with the uh, Canyon Country Store and all the stuff. So that was a complete neighborhood then. And don't forget, I haven't forgotten Bruce Lee, but he's not part of it yet. He will be part of that later. Yeah. Remember that the official founder of the Church of Satan, where once member was allegedly Susan Atkins, who stabbed uh, several people in that fateful night to death and she said I had no feelings of it he said the TV set or satanic family altar has grown more elaborate since the early 50s from the tiny fuzzy screen to huge entertainment centers covering entire walls with several TV monitors what started as an innocent respite from everyday life has become in itself a replacement for real life for millions a major religion of the masses we are talking about masses religion of the masses or the antichrist movement antichrist spirit or the people on the broadway and it's no by no coincidence that uh, this uh, theater uh, mile is called the broadway yeah so we are not mixing apples and oranges and peaches and herb here but we are speaking about that it looks like an army project yeah she is being presented here as a kind of whore of Babylon. Yeah, you, you, come on, that's not murdered innocence, huh? I can enlarge it a bit and you see what's it up. This is from Esquire. A beginner's guide to Mao Zedong, the Chinese leader, which was uh, 
jesuitically trained, starring Sharon Tate in 1967. Once again, I said that is not the, sta the, the pentagram of the United States, and she is not murdered innocence. Yeah, she has been displayed as Lolita, murdered innocence. Huh? Wow, how innocent she is looking. Huh? So she was murdered by the cult leader Charles Manson. Mm -hmm. Oh, even the date is cor incorrect. Oh, my, my, my. So. This is the Esquire magazine article. How is Marxist Leninist theory to be linked with the practice of the Chinese revelation, a revolution? To use a common expression, it is shooting the arrow at the target. Yeah, you see, you have to be fool the the audience, yeah, so uh, that you can portray a half naked lady there, huh? As the arrow is the target, so is Marxism Leninism to the Chinese revolution. Ah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so that is just here a political puppet at the moment for the Esquire magazine, but it gets worse. Sharon Tate for a spread in Esquire magazine 1967, a t-shirt printed with the Vietnam star that is about the Vietnam War. So may I assume that the entire thing happening in that Laurel Canyon, where David McGowan had so elaborately uh, written about in Weird Scenes at the Canyon, has something to do with the Vietnam War? Isn't that the anti-war movement that is uh, just a prick in the eye of the government of the United States? So clearly it is attributed to Vietnam at the Esquire magazine. And Vietnam has quite another story. Vietnam, why did we go from the Night of Malta, Avro Manhattan? It is a religious war. The religious beginnings of an unholy war or Spellis war, Cardinal Spellman's war, it is about the elimination of the Buddhists in Vietnam. So it is a religious task where the Buddhists even had been monks. They had burned themselves. It was a religious war. We have talked about that in the Kennedy session of uh, Cardinal War, session 50. So it has a religious content that Cheryl uh, Tate stuff, but it is an, an, uh, you have to or well, we have to see the bigger picture. In Vietnam, my son was killed. What for? Of course, these exoteric people, they don't get it. Yeah, Why is the American uh, government busy in Vietnam when they do not know that America is just a military power of the Vatican in a Vietnam religious war? Yeah, And that is a broken cross here. That is not a peace symbol. So everything is mixed around America with the pentagram. Everything is satanic, but they don't get it. And why her son was killed, when that is correct, is just uh, because they do not realize the beast system being represented by the obelisk. That's why. Ah, that's a good way to put it, Michael. They see yeah, the things, but, but they don't okay, realize right it. They hear the things, you. but they can't comprehend uh, uh, that. Well, that's true. And, you know, why why is it that uh, we have to uh, view, you know, this this uh, this monument <laughs> as a monument? It, yeah, it's yeah an that's, that's what they tell it, you. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's right. It's forbidden why in the is... Bible. It's forbidden in the Bible to erect any pillars. I can look for the right. biblical verse. So that's the case. Yeah? She's not murdered innocence. Yeah? She's a playmate. Yeah? She has uh, posed for Playboy and you see she's been posing for the government. Yeah, She was posing for the government uh, riding on a rocket when she was 17. Come on, she's not an ordinary girl. She's not murdered innocence. Yeah? She's an army asset, it seems. Vietnam star. Yeah, of course, everybody looks to the Vietnam star, huh? Yeah, my, 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 really, yeah, it's all in for the star. Murdered innocence, yeah, I have to laugh, sorry, yeah, and this is just here, yeah, nobody reads the text, everybody looks at the girl and she's just posing in for war, yeah, promoting war or what, this is not a peace movement here, she's an army asset, once again, she was trained in, uh, at an army uh, school education, her father is army, murdered innocence, yeah? When uh, she's posing for Playboy and... Uh, her father, Colonel Paul Tate, worked at the San Presidio Army Base in San Francisco. San Francisco, St. Francis. Jesuit. 
St. Presidio of San Francisco is, uh, by the way, is a part of the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. I said, oh, Golden Gate. Uh, that was uh, Sagittarius. And that's by no uh, coincidence that she was posing with a bow and arrow then. Huh? It has something to do. Yeah, that park is overlooking the Golden Gate Bridge. Ah, what a coincidence, huh? What a coincidence. So what is that, Michael? San Francisco, what's the meaning of that? Isn't it... Uh Isn't that uh, San? Is that Latin? Yeah, we have talked about that two or three sessions ago. That is, it's yeah, St. Right. Francis, and it was officially been yeah, uh, founded, Francis. I think, by the Dominicans because the Jesuits were then forbidden at that time. But of course, it's about uh, St. Francis. Of, they will claim it is St. Francis of Assisi, the same line that uh, the current Pope is telling you. Yeah, exactly. When they really mean St. Francis Xavier. Yes. The co founder of the Jesuit order, yes. along with yes. Ignatius. And the Loyola. one who went to. Huh? To China. the east. Yeah, China. That's why so many uh, Chinese people are then being uh, in Chinatown, um, in the uh, community of Chinatown in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Including the one who has been born on 27th of November 1940 called uh, Bruce G. Lun Fan. Or no, Bruce Lee, with his many names. Yeah, but the father of Chevin Tate, he worked at San Presidio Army in San Francisco. And that is uh, part of the Golden Gate National Recreation Area overlooking the Golden Gate. What a coincidence, huh? Mm -hmm. And that Presidio was the headquarters during the Second World War under the authority of Executive Order 9066 signed by President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Now, by the way, that's the one who has employed uh, the father of uh, John F. Kennedy as being an ambassador in Great Britain. <laughs> so, a Freemason, once again, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Freemason, among any other things. During the time when uh, Sharon Tate was allegedly uh, killed, murdered, slaughtered, hanged and everything else, it was 1969, that was modernized, San Presidio, and the Letterman Army Institute of Research was built. So I presume that um, that San Presidio, where Sharon Tate's father worked, was still happening, was still uh, working, running. Interesting, as a hospital, aha. Uh -huh. But it was not closed down. It was even used in the Desert Storm War, the first Gulf War, 1991. Hmm. So Sharon Tate and Polanski were friends of Dr. Sellers, uh, friends of Peter Sellers, Dr. Strangelove, another commander of the British Empire. You know that CBE is the title of James Bond as well. I said, hmm, interesting, but uh, we don't have any time for this. <sighs> so many things uh, which I happen to see on the internet when I see interesting videos. So 1967, she appeared in Playboy. Ha, come on, Playboy with a rabbit. Huh? Playboy is a psyop in itself, yeah, programming people to be bunnies. So Playboy in itself is uh, founded by Hugh Hefner in the year of MK Ultra, MK Ultra 1953, yeah, depicting uh, people as butterflies. So mind control. Nothing else. And in interesting also that a grown man has been portrayed as boys, huh? So there must be somebody who's directing them, no? because they're only playboys. I thought they were playmen, but interesting, they are playboys. Huh. Yeah. So the CIA MI6 also have uh, been uh, mixed in with that. Hmm. The CIA agent Michael Hollingshead married uh, Marilyn Cole. He was friend of Roman Polanski and produced his Macbeth film. Ah. There, we got another link of CIA to Roman Polanski now. I said, oh, now it's getting interesting, huh? So, <laughs> she's into Playboy and she's into Happy Easter, because we know that Easter is the feast of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Ha, huh? it isn't. Easter is a pagan ritual for Tammuz. Yeah, because it, uh, it changes every year. The day changes every year, but sorry. He only died once, yeah, one fixed date. If the date is changing, then it's not a death 
is a date or so it has another meaning it is uh, closely related to the moon cycle so therefore you know it has nothing to do with jesus christ and it's just only being the short explanation of that yeah so she's fooling you into a pagan system happy easter with the bunny yeah so she's just a program kitten or she's just a bunny uh, at least she's an army asset yeah i think we can agree on that Yeah. Sharon, by the way, means Rose of the Belly, um, like Rosenthal, which is a Jewish name, also from a famous German uh, showmaster who is deceased. And uh, she lived there in the Cielo Drive. And uh, Sharon actually means uh, the Rose of Sharon, Rose of the Valley. It's in the Song of Solomon. It's interesting, huh? You see, this is from uh, Songs of Solomon here. I am the rose of Sherem and the lily of the valleys. So it's also a biblical attribution. Once again, the rose of the valley. Are we not talking about the entire chapter because that would uh, lead us to six hours uh, sessions in that. Yeah, But uh, Sharon has been mentioned uh, frequently here in that uh, Bible. In 1969, after the moon landing of Apollo, the media reported about pregnant Sharon Tate murdered by satanic code of Antichrist figure Charles Manson. Yes, that's the murdered innocence, huh? And she has something to do, I think, with the, with the mammon, I think, huh? when he is to portray the Rolls Royce, uh, that she has in common with Bruce Lee, who wanted to have his golden Rolls Royce. At least she's uh, got a white Rolls Royce, huh? What a coincidence here. Yeah. What a coincidence. In 1966, when the Church of Satan had been founded, she was playing her part as an actress in the occult thing, Eye of the Devil. Anton LaVey, founder of the Church of Satan, also uh, with the Manson family, member Susan Atkins was then having his Church of Satan. Yeah, all into Satanism, huh? Promoting it right in the eye. Ah, some say also that Manson means the son of man. Yeah, that me would be a Christ-like figure, which he officially has been portrayed or been sold to the mass media as a kind of savior to the Manson cult. Mm -hmm. The Devil's Eye, 1966. Sharon Tate in Eye of the Devil. Of course, it's the one I got. So. Sharon Tate and David Hemmings. David Hemmings from Blow Up, one of the most interesting pictures of 1966, by the way. Yeah, once again, the devil's eye, the devil with the Vulcanian salute. Ah, that was it, Vulcanian salute. Yes. Yeah, 1967. Ah, so many things are happening there. Sharon is the rose of the valley of death. Yeah, so it's the official burying of uh, Sharon Tate, 1967. See here, the rose or the plant here of death. Then she was playing a valley of the dolls yeah so doll program okay this was the first part of two parts of the sharon tate ritual i can uh, really promise uh, uh, there will be much coming up in the next part uh, so that we really uh, look behind all the things that the media wants to sell us I'm not making fun of anything. I'm just expressing my opinion here on based on my research and you're free to have another opinion about that. I have absolutely no problem with that. Please be polite and uh, please just read the Bible so that you are really in the Christ spirit and not being uh, promoted, not having all this propaganda brainwash of all that mass media. They're not telling you that uh, the father of Sharon Tate is CIA, that she is a CIA asset that there are many, many ties to military, army intelligence and all the strange things that are happening in Laurel Canyon. Thanks so much for having me. Looking forward to next time hanging it over to my beloved brother, Brett. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, this is more of a history of deception in the United States than anything else and around the world, actually, because the United States has been very influential in the development of the modern society as we live today. And sadly, um, we're, we're looking at some of the, the most, oh, I don't know, deceptive media campaigns that uh, have ever been developed. Uh, obviously, the moon landing was probably the biggest one. And... Um, 
you know, we're not asking for much here. We're just asking that you just sit down and listen. I know it's going to make some people very upset. Uh, and that's totally understandable because, you know, the first reaction to truth is anger because when you admit to being deceived, you admit to having listened to the liar and it hurts. I know it hurts. It hurt me too. But the point is you come back tomorrow and uh, look at it again and things start to change quite a bit. I think Michael can vouch for that too. So we hope not to be deceived, nor do we hope to lead anyone into any deception at all here. Our mission, so to speak, <laughs> it's not a mission because we know the missions are the sending out of Jesuits, right, Michael? Mm -hmm. Yes. But, you know, these old habits of ours, Michael, they creep up from time to time and like, like I just came out of my mouth. So I'm not infallible here. I'm certainly uh, full of all kinds of compromises. So, again, thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in to our research. And I hope to see you next time. God bless. Bye-bye.